factors that leads to malnutrition and I know an obvious factor would be poverty but I guess the key uh, element of it all is the lack of proper understanding and information around uh, best cooking uh, practices and food preparation. At Calisys for Health we do believe that um, growing and eating healthy food must be a part of a long-term solution to malnutrition. And part of the way we really will be working with this is that we all our efforts revolve around transforming um, the clinical treatment of malnutrition by using um, uh, nutrition sensitive agriculture and um, empowering communities with knowledge and resources that, that they do need to make uh, informed choices of the household. So health centers are um, the primary contact of uh, healthcare services in Rwanda and uh, we do work with health centers to integrate um, targeted agricultural support and comprehensive health education into the current existing uh, treatment of malnutrition. I think literature has shown and research around is that uh, malnutrition is such a complex uh, issue and there are many, there's a, many factors that really lead to it. So we, when we are designing our curriculum, really we worked with uh, the community. Uh, we worked with, um, we looked at what the national policies and the international literature has to say. And um, we really came up with a comprehensive uh, you know, package of information that we felt would in many ways address the cause of malnutrition. Nayo <laughs> One thing that we've seen with the um, kitchen garden is that uh, it's one way of really promoting consumption and the you know production of uh, dietary diverse food in the household. And uh, looking at the statistics, we've seen seeing an increase really in uh, consumption of. Uh, um, iron rich foods by children and um, dietary diversity uh, threshold has really increased. So, kitchen gardens are really a key component into what we do, and uh, it does contribute a lot into uh, improvement the nutrition health status of the children. We fuse uh, the farm normally contributes to the program in, in different ways. First of all, we normally uh, provide to the families uh, program input. 
So among input, there are some that we produce from the farm. Uh, among the ones that we produce, we have to produce amaranth seeds from the farm, we produce nightshade seeds from the farm, local eggplant, and also notify uh, sweet potato vines. And in addition to that, we also give them fruit trees that we prepare from our nursery here. And also it is a, a, a research place where we, we normally do different trials of the things that we teach mothers and also the things that help us to improve our home garden package and what we teach mothers as well. Yeah. My favorite part is the community spirit and especially community lunch, I think. Um, it's really nice just taking time every day to enjoy a meal with everyone from the country director to the women who go to the farm. Everyone sort of here. In, in our in the Rwandan culture, uh, there's always been a place for everyone around the table. Part of what really shows through my spirit of the farm is that uh, we do have uh, you know, farm lunches where we, we invite the neighboring communities, the children, and the most wonderful to come and share meals with our staff and this is always a time um, where there's bonding, where there is sharing not only of food but also um, of stories and um, you know, having light moments. My favorite piece of data is what's called the minimum acceptable diet, which is a, a combination indicator that measures the quantity of food to make sure that kids are getting enough food and the quality of their diet so that they make sure they're getting a good variety and enough nutrients. Um, and every season at the beginning, we see that it's at uh, 18%, which is uh, exactly in line with the national average. And then at the end of the season, it it goes up to about 45 percent so it's um, we know that it's it's good data because it's it's the same as the average at baseline and then at the end it's like a almost 50 percent are getting the right diet so it's a, it's a really happy really good improvement the the women that we work with um, they get knowledge and they change their behaviors and so that the next child they have is um, born healthy and is raised in a healthy environment and so it's really preventing malnutrition from starting in the first place which is pretty amazing.